Hello, a very good evening to you. It's me, Scotty McClure. We are, of course, live on Facebook Live, the world's top broadcast platform. I am, of course, the world's top broadcaster. I'm here with you for one hour. One hour of superb scintillating information, education, and entertainment for the world. And we have a lot to do tonight and so much to talk about. So, I hope you'll come and join me. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about Scotty McClue. Live on Facebook Live just for the one hour. Now, I'm not going to read all your shout outs out because everybody can see them. And I'm absolutely fed up to the back teeth with people saying, Scotty, why are you reading these out? We can actually see them and we can see them before you can. I think that's absolutely amazing. Anyway, if you've just joined us, a very warm welcome to me, Scotty McClue, to the Scotty McClue Show, and of course, a very warm welcome to you. Now then, what a week it's been for Scottish politics. I can see Scotland becoming independent. There is a massive, massive appetite for it in Scotland. And as I say, even metaphorically, the Scots are dancing in the street at the idea of freedom. So we'll talk about that tonight. We'll touch on that. Very, very interesting. And I was watching the Mar Show this morning, and I saw Ruth Davidson on the Mar Show, and I thought to myself, all of this has to be factual stuff we're getting from everyone. So just be very careful that everybody that you see on mainstream media, as it's called, but of course mainstream media is very much the Scotty McClue show now. So there we are. We are growing one of the globe's greatest talk shows with me on a Sunday night at 10 o'clock sharp. I don't know if you saw Ruth Davidson on with Andrew Marr this morning, and I'd be very interested in what you thought about that. She was actually saying that there wasn't such a great appetite for independence in so many words. So there we are. And uh, also, lots and lots of other subjects tonight. I would like to ask your opinion on whether supermarkets should employ some young gentlemen, they don't have to be young gentlemen, some gentlemen to help ladies with reverse parking. Now, I don't know if you've ever sat in a supermarket car park and you've watched the ladies attempt reverse parking. It borders from the comedy to the sublime to the ridiculous. And uh, I think it probably would be quite a nice service. Now, it's not mandatory, but it would just be helpful if somebody could actually say, Madam, would you like to step out of the car? And I will park that for you. Eddie O'Donnell's watching. My favorite heating engineer. Wonderful man. So there you are. Dinky do to you, Eddie. It's live the news, says Mick McFarlane. You're all there, of course. Tremendous. And... Uh, Valet parking, yes, you see it in America outside hotels, and I think it's something we would benefit from in this country. So there you are in Scotland and in England and Northern Ireland and Ireland and Wales. But uh, you tell me what you think about it. Also, would you be willing to help people to lose weight? Would you be willing to buddy up with a fat person? Now, I think this would be a very, very interesting scheme. Obviously, I want to talk to you lot before we decide if it's something that countries should be bringing in. But you become a fat person's buddy. So if somebody has a large body mass index, then uh, say they stayed along the road from you, you could chap the door, tap, 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 and say, would the fat person like to come out for a walk with me? And uh, what you'd be doing, of course, you'd be improving their health, you'd be saving lives, and you may also bring them out of a bit of a downer because it's nice to have company. And if you said, my mission in life is to save a life, to save a fat person from themselves, then I think that's something we should be looking at as well. So many, many subjects. Now, you've got your Facebook in front of you. We'll have share points during the program. When we share, 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 share. Just to put you in the picture, of course, those of you who are on uh, would make jobs, I suppose, and not just for women, says Angus Thompson. Very, very important. Excellent. Women are the only ones on the road. They do not stop to let you out for themselves, says George Mullen. I know, yes, they're not very good. And uh, so there we are. Uh, Robin Sullis. Love, good show, she says. Now, Robin is a big, big radio lady in the United States, and she's a massive McClue fan, and I am a massive 
Robin Solis van. So there you are. Fair exchange is no robbery, as we say. <clears throat> share point, says David Gardner. Yes, of course, David, it's early, but share, 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 share. Start typing on your Facebook page and let everyone know that Scotty McClue is, of course, live on the big one. Facebook Live, the World Stop Broadcast Platform. Sunday nights, 10 o'clock sharp. Television's off, radio's off, because Scotty McClue is on. And Scotty McClue has got to get through. I am, after all, the World Stop Broadcaster. So there you are. Dinky do, says Lee Buckinshaw, and to you. Scotty, most of the internet, they can buddy up and uh, fit in 15. A YouTube guy, play the walking game. You have to catch little pocket monsters. Excellent. Were you at the shops today, Scotty? Says Daniel Joseph. I wasn't, Daniel. Very, very naughty of me. Normally on a Sunday afternoon, I like to nip up to the shops and pick up one or two bits and pieces. But I wasn't, so I didn't see you. So dinky do to you, I say. We're watching you from Japan, Scotty. Says Derek McCrory. Derek, dinky do from Japan. That is fantastic. Do you think the SNP are going to take over in Glasgow City Council and will they stop um, whatever's going on? So John, I don't know, George. I don't discuss city councils on here. We don't get involved in minutiae. So there you are. <clears throat> and I certainly would not predict anything about political parties and councils. So there you are. That's your answer on that one. So we do not go there, I say, George. Uh, Dinky, says Norrie Crozier, of course, absolutely and to you. Not all people that are fat choose to be fat. There can be medical reasons and emotional reasons too. We all carry a bit too much weight. I speak for myself too, says Tony Matt. Yes, of course they can, Tony, but let's not make emotion and uh, conditions an excuse for people who stuff their gobs with cream cakes and chips. That's something that does happen. Adam Mitchell says, I'm watching you from Hull Royal Infirmary. I saw the Antiques Roadshow on the British Bottom Cream tonight, coming from Hull. And I had a little hand on my heart because I thought everybody in Hull knows Scotty McClue very well. Everybody in Yorkshire knows Scotty McClue very well. Everybody in Lancashire knows Scotty McClue. Everybody in the Midlands knows Scotty McClue. Everybody in the Northwest knows Scotty McClue. Everybody in the Northeast knows Scotty McClue. Everybody in Scotland knows Scotty McClue. And if you don't, you must be an alien life form from another planet, but you are very, very welcome to watch the program. I had uh, somebody today ask you about my glasses. said, Scotty, why do you put on glasses if you're looking over the top of them all the time? The thing is, I don't need the glasses to see the camera, but I do need the glasses if I want to look down. Martin Monaghan. Uh, so there we are. Excellent stuff. Uh, well said, Scotty, about the fatties, said Dave Helmsley from Stafford. Uh, Fiona Morag Graham. Hello from Orkney, Scotty. Terrible weather here. No. Morag. It is not terrible weather, Fiona Morag. It is not terrible weather. It is wet and windy and blowy and a little bit wintry, but it's not terrible because if you think about it, when you go out in Orkney, if you said, oh, the wind is a terrible, terrible day, you would have 365 terrible days. And you don't want to have that. You want 365 brilliant days. And that's why uh, in Argyle, where my crowd come from, they always understate the weather. If you can't stand up in the wind, they say, aye, fresh the day, eh? And uh, if it's bucketing down in stair rods, they say, showery mine, showery. Uh, so there we go. Uh, I can't have a dog, but I'm looking for someone to let me walk their dog, as it would help with depression, says Angie. Now we need to get to the the bottom of what's causing the depression, is it clinical, is it chemical, is it what's causing it, is it something that's happened, Angie, and sort that out, and then the dog, you and my wee Clyde, could go for a walk. Evening, Scotty, first time viewer, says Danielle Stobo. Where are you viewing from, Danielle? We have people all over the world. Uh, so there we are. Regarding parking for ladies, how about superstores just making the spaces bigger instead, or just have a section of car park 
for the ladies. Well, you can't actually get much bigger. I mean, I've always driven fairly large vehicles, and they go into one space, no problem. So a lady with a wee car should be able to park it, but very often they can't because what is to do with the female species do have a different spatial awareness to the males. This is not me getting at the ladies or anything like that. They just could do with a hand to park. Hi, Scotty, we're from Whitworth in Lancashire, says Francis Donnelly. Dinky do to Whitworth, I say. Um, so there we are. I was at the circus, Scotty, and my daughter pointed out a fatty taking up two seats. Did she pay double? Ah, so there we are. Should overweight people pay double on public transport, I ask you? Let me know what you think about that. Uh, so there you go. Um, why don't we make rubber cars for women, says George Mullen. Very, very good, George, yes. And then you just bounce off them in a Michelin man suit uh, as well. Fantastic. I need to go for a while and make some movies. Sounds dodgy, but we are a media company says John Toms, fantastic, a big businessman in Scotland, and, of course, uh, a very fine media man. Excellent. Dink you do to you, John Toms. Now, what is the time? It's uh, already, I've got it here, just coming up to quarter past ten. Is that right? Can we share, 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 share? Let's have a share point. If you've just joined us and you're wondering what on earth is going on in your Facebook, you're watching Scotty McClure with the finest bit of television you will ever see. Scotty McClure, I am the world's top broadcaster. I'll spell it for you. Capital S, small C, O, double T, I, E. That's the Scotty. The McClure, capital M, small C, capital C, L, U, E. We're on every week on a Sunday night, Facebook Live at 10 o'clock sharp. 2200 hours at the moment Greenwich Mean Time next week that will probably be 2200 hours British Summer Time Dinky do and night for now says John Tom's night for you John off you go to your bubbles I say thanks for a the mention there Scotty says Francis Donnelly no not at all but I have been asked not to just do mentions Francis because we are a discussion program Last week we had very interesting subjects. A lot of people might not have heard them because they might have been out celebrating. But we were discussing Rangers and Celtic, two big Glasgow football teams. Should they be replaced with one team called Glasgow United? So there we are. Uh, should we go independent, says Mark Brennan? Of course, Mark. What country would not want self-determination? What country would not want to have full say? <coughs> over everything that happens within it. Very interesting. I saw uh, um, a, a video uh, from some time ago with Alex Salmond, I think aged 34, and uh, Dennis Healy was arguing with him. It was on a question time with the late Sir Robin Day, a very fine broadcaster, uh, a man that I admired very much. And um, it, it was very interesting. The chat was just the same. The Labour Party were trying to down the SNP, and Dennis Healy actually said, the late Dennis Healy, who was a Chancellor at the time, said, um, I, uh, what was it you said now? Very interesting. Um, yes, the chances of the SNP getting a majority in Scotland are the same as opening an oyster with a, with a bus ticket or something like that. And of course, the SNP have a massive, massive mandate from the people to go independent and I think Westminster need to listen very 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 carefully to that because on a legal basis Westminster should treat Scotland as an equal all right uh, Indira F2 says Mick McFarlane yes indeed Glasgow United will never happen too many sectarian marches allowed in the city 53 in the one weekend listen you can never actually give offense you can only take it so you're only seeing these marches as sectarian if you actually believe in that. The orange people believe in the crown and the Bible. So there we are, two things. And uh, they're staying anyway. Uh, Glasgow United never happening. Yes, it may well do, George. Never say never. <clears throat> <clears throat> now then, the electoral system in Scotland was deliberately set up to prevent any party gaining a majority. The SNP broke the system, says Rudy Zach, because 
They were the most popular party. Dinky Doo Scotty says, Wadge, Wadge, Dinky Doo to you. I say, Tony Ben, best MP ever, Scotty, great man to listen to. Uh, yes, I met Tony Ben. He was a lovely, lovely character. I uh, thoroughly enjoyed hearing all his chat. And uh, I met him at a May Day rally in Barnsley in the park in Barnsley. And it was a wonderful experience. Brass bands there and, and fantastic. And there was Tony Ben. And we had a right good chat. So there you go. Uh, well said about the Onsworth Scotty. Most dipsticks don't see that, says Adam Mitchell. No, most people don't quite understand the background to things. Religion has never, ever, ever, ever caused a problem in the world. What does cause a problem is a lack of knowledge and understanding. That's where Scotty McClue comes in because he can tell you what is what. Uh, how can Theresa May refuse a Scottish referendum when the MPs have 56 MPs out of 59? Have they not got 57? I don't know. I thought it was 56, but somebody corrected me and said it's 57. The Conservatives only have one MP, yes. So in actual fact, conservatism in Scotland is an irrelevance. So it doesn't really matter what you say. Plus, it's a unionist party and you've got to ask yourself, why are there unionists in the Scottish Parliament? Sounds a bit like the wooden horse to me. Uh, so there you go, Mick McFarlane Mustache, Scotty, I'm up early. I'll watch this later. Yes, I'll upload it to YouTube for you, Mick. McClure, can you invite Annabelle Goldie and Ruth Davidson on the show? Uh, says Gordon Stilling. <coughs> he thinks that they are both extremely attractive ladies, and I'm sure they are, Gordon. Uh, Colin Petrie, excellent point about religion. Yes, indeed, Colin. We make excellent points on here. My gran said you can't have an orange lily without a green stem. Your gran was a lady of great wisdom. I have to say, Angie Thompson. Orange men are against independence, says Eddie Doby Sr. Well, I think that's just because they don't understand it. They don't realise that a, we'd be keeping the Queen as our monarch anyway. That's your first rule of independence. You can do what you like with parliaments, but you never, ever, ever, ever interfere with the Crown in this country. And the nationalist movement will have to take that on board. That is a fact. I am not a political animal, as you well know, but uh, I do have an interest in what's happening. I am an economic animal, economical. Uh, so there you are. And on economics, Scotland could absolutely walk it on their own. So don't listen to any um, left-wing and right-wing rhetoric that's been bandied about from a unionist point of view. Remember, it is not in Westminster's interests for Scotland to be independent, because for a start, they would be over £40 billion down at the bank. OK, so it's really all about money. So you can have the prime minister saying the time isn't right and this isn't right and that's not right and you're not getting this and you're not getting that. None of that actually matters. At the end of the day, it's down to dosh, down to plain lucre, right? So there you are. <coughs> <coughs> Scotty, you're joking. Religion's never caused a problem. The Nazis kill Jews, Muslims, extremists kill anyone. I could go on and on and on. Yeah, but that was a lack of knowledge and understanding. So there you are. Had there been knowledge and understanding, these people would have been alive today or would have died a natural death, I say. The late Tony Benn is, as Jeremy Corbyn, are vehemently opposed to Scotland's independence. Corbyn says an independent Palestine would be good, an independent Ireland is good, but an independent Scotland, well, he's got to do that because he's the head of a unionist party, right? But he, what he's not realising is he's the head of the Labour movement. So he needs to look into his history and see that the founders of the Labour movement were very much for home rule and for independence in Scotland and Ireland. So, you know, I mean, there's a wee bit of historical revision 
going on by the labor movement here. Also, he needs to realize that it was a labor man that founded the SNP, the chairman of the Labour Party, uh, founded the SNP, R.B. Cunningham Graham, Robert Boynton Cunningham Graham, fantastic guy of Gartmore, an aristocrat. And uh, he and Keir Hardy were around with the Labour movement. And then, of course, 1928, you had a big surge forward in the SNP. And then again, <clears throat> the problem is the SNP do need to take on board that you never, ever, ever interfere with the crowd. Okay? You're needing some honey in your tea. Mrs. McClure, get the kettle on. He's parched, says Angie. No, not at all, Angie. Not parched at all. So, absolutely. Um, what have we got? A lot of silly nonsense. George, please stop posting silly nonsense. We're trying to move this program on to discussing world issues. Issues that affect, like health issues, that affect the fat people. Like ladies driving cars, right? We want the roads to be safe. And if ladies struggle with spatial awareness, we need to help them. We're also talking about an independent Scotland. So can we not have silly comments, please? Um, what have we got? Hi, Scotty, my friend. I love your talk and your discussions, says Robert McCarty. Excellent stuff. Scotland has no borrowing powers. Therefore, when independent, would have no debt and no deficit. Fact. Only goodwill would see a future Scotland honour their share of the UK's gargantuan debt. Well, I thought Margaret Thatcher put us all through austerity because she wanted to pay down the national debt. And now it's up in several trillion. So there you go. So we need to find out what's going on. We need to get more facts from the politicians. Why do we get fibs, I say? Uh, right, Fiona Moore Graham is telling me there are 54 SNP members in Parliament. Two independents, one Scottish Labour, and one Lib Dem. So there. So I do take that back. I thought there were 56, but there are 54 because we've got two independents, one Scottish Labour, one Tory, and one Lib Dem. And Fiona Moore Graham will know because she was a very, very switched on lady up in Orkney there. Dinky do, I say, to all our Orcadians. Lovely, lovely, lovely to have you with us. John Paul Preston, Gordon Brown sold all the gold, Scotty. Yes, he did. And then we had so-called austerity to get the gold back. They took old ladies' wedding rings and engagement rings, and there was a robbery. All these little gold stalls that you saw in supermarkets and what have you, people had to sell their gold because they'd been made impoverished by the Conservatives. So there you go. But uh, yes, Gordon Brown sold it first. I have to say that, John Paul Preston. But also, Labour left a note for the Conservatives saying there is no money. Okay? And of course, remember, governments don't have any money. They've only got the money from you and from me. We give them the money or they take it. One or the other. Right, uh, keep your things coming. If you've just joined us, a very warm welcome. You're watching the Scotty McClue Show. We are live globally across the world on Facebook Live. We're here every Sunday night at 10 o'clock sharp. Be there or be square. During the week, I did a Wednesday pop-up. You'll see me in a blue jumper with a Wednesday pop-up. So make sure you see that. Everything is uploaded onto YouTube. So you should be able to catch up during the week and also catch up on Facebook. Uh, you will see the Facebook Live videos doing the rounds. Send them round on their way, please. And share, 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 share. Word of mouth, tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about Scotty McClure at 10. Live on Facebook Live on a Sunday evening, 2200 hours Greenwich Mean Time. This is for the last week, it's Greenwich Mean Time because we'll be going on to British summertime next week as the clocks uh, go forward, spring forward, fall back. Uh, he bailed out the banks with our tax money, says Elvis. Yes, absolutely, Elvis. I thought you'd left the building. A great show, Scotty. 
It's coming clear in Australia, says Erica Meyer. Erica Meyer, love to you in Australia. And you tell all the cobbles out there that we send love from Scotland, England, Ireland, Wales, Northern Ireland, and of course across Europe, Russia, China, Japan, Africa, South Africa, South America, Canada, the Middle East, dinky do, women can't drive forward, never mind reversing, says Steve Burrows. What are the, why do they call it Greenwich meantime? Because, Andy, eh, Andy, Greenwich was the center of where the, the ships would set their chronometers. So there you are. The, the Royal Naval College was at Greenwich. And uh, that's where the ships would set their chronometers before they left for overseas. In Scotland, the ships out in the Firth of Forth would uh, set theirs by the ball dropping on Carlton Hill at one o'clock. The one o'clock gunfires from the castle in Edinburgh. And just so that you know that um, light goes before sound, the speed of light much faster than the speed of sound, you will actually see the puff of smoke from the gun before you hear the report when it fires from Edinburgh Castle. But at the same time, on Carlton Hill from the observatory, a ball drops on a cord and the ships would be watching through their telescopes, the spy glasses, their binoculars, their monoculars. They would see the ball drop and set the ship's chronometer to one o'clock. So there you go. Uh, I've learned some at news, says Angie. Hi, Scotty, I'm watching, says Daniel Boyle. Dinky do, Daniel Boyle. Well done. I'm sorry you got confused when I said I was coming up in a few minutes time at 12.30 p.m. to do the promo for today. You were saying, is it on at 10 or 12.30? But of course, we promote the program usually on a Sunday morning between, say, 11 and 12 midday. Evening, McCluffy Airdrie, says Neil James Mills. Uh, I thought Gordon Brown has been one of our best MPs and chancellors, says Josh. Certainly a highly intelligent chap, but I wish he wouldn't come up and make these fear speeches uh, when he thinks that uh, Scottish independence is a real goer and is on the cards because that's not helping. The reason the Labour Party have been cast out into the wilderness is because they didn't back independence for Scotland. Otherwise, you'd have seen a totally different political picture. What you would have seen in Scotland, if Labour had backed Scottish independence, then the lady, uh, Joanne Lamont, who was the um, head of the Labour Party at the time, may well have been the first minister of Scotland because over the years, if you look at the record between the SNP and the Labour Party, they've always been kind of neck and neck. They used to say you couldn't get a fag paper between them. And that's why they absolutely thoroughly loathed and detested each other. They did not like each other because the Labour movement saw the SNP as a threat. They were quite right to do so, of course. But the SNP is well organised, well run. Scotland has never, ever, ever in its whole history been so well run unless you went back to maybe the 1500s when we were trading heavily with Europe so there you go remember Scotland has uh, has only um, been part of uh, Britain and the United Kingdom for 310 years 310 years this year yes so there you are good evening says Jane MacDonald the wonderful Jane MacDonald lovely to hear from you Jane a very fine lady Margaret Bona says, SNP all the way. Well, we're not a party political program, Margaret, so there you are. But the SNP are very, very powerful. Do you think Brown regrets siding with Cameron on Indiref? Well, why would you have a Conservative Party and a Labour movement if they're just going to chummy up when the going gets tough? That's when you need... The, the politics are never, ever better. And a country is never better run politically than uh, when you've got a powerful government and a very, very powerful opposition snapping at their heels. And always remember, it's Her Majesty's government and Her Majesty's opposition. That's why you do not mess with the Crown. Very important. Brown offered near federalism when the polls showed a majority in the 2014 referendum. Basically all powers bar foreign affairs and defence. We have what amounts to 30% tax raising powers. His vow, says Rudy Seymour, as I say the Seymours are always a bit difficult guys, 
because it's such a tiny thing to press. There we are. <coughs> Uh, thirty percent tax raising powers as vow has been proved to be not worth the paper it was written on if it was written on paper at all so i would say your problem is never ever go on the promises what i would quite like to see is scotland say look here's the deal let's go independent now let's remain in europe let's do it our way for say five years if it's not working out, we'll come back and chummy up with you. But let's go independent now and let Scotland move on. It's the same with broadcasting. The, the BBC are offering a new channel with a £30 million budget. Now, this is a television channel. £30 million is a drop in the ocean. Scotty McClure is looking to raise £5 million to give you an independent media. Now, at... at First, you haven't taken me seriously. Now, I would say to you, start taking me seriously. Go to gofundme.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue and stick in what you've got, a five or a ten or hundred pounds we've had. It doesn't matter. Put something in there and let's start building an independent media. So, back to the BBC. They've decided to set up a new channel for Scotland with a 30 million pound budget. I can tell you that the budget for Radio Scotland, which is radio, no vision, you've got to probably around £25 million. The BBC raises £325 million a year from you and I, the people of Scotland, the good burgers. All right? Now, they give us back 3%. They raise 9% of the United Kingdom revenue, and they give us back 3% spent on programming. So that doesn't sound like a great deal. So instead of saying, well, we could give you a new channel, say, look, could you just confine yourselves to south of the border and we will set up the Scottish Broadcasting Corporation and we will keep as much of the £325 million as possible in Scotland and we will do our own programming and look after our own broadcasting and the Scottish government will regulate that broadcasting where regulation is required by law. And that's really the way we should be heading. Not listening to promises and vows and rhetoric and hot air and nonsense. What we should actually be doing is saying, let's do it now. Let's go independent, but we are on a chain. We can come back if it suits us in, say, five or ten years' time. All right? So give it a chance. That's what I'm saying. Um, problem is, he's offering what the SNP asked for in the white paper. That was laughed at by the UK government. Yes, I know. Full federalism, full fiscal autonomy. In Scotland, I cannot see the problem because the Scots have proved that they can run the country very, very well, indeed, up to now. But, of course, their hands are tied by Westminster, who have never, ever had a clear understanding of Scotland or the Scottish people. Okay? Fiona Mona Graham says, two of the MPs have been suspended from the SNP still, yes. And what do you think of Jeremy Corbyn, Sir Simon? I am I'm a big fan of Jeremy Corbyn. He's a very, very clever man. And the fact that they are saying that uh, he's not great leadership material and he'll never bring Labour back to power and all that shows just how good he actually is. The level of criticism aimed at Jeremy Corbyn by the establishment in this country shows just how powerful and effective he is. I would only have one thing to ask of Jeremy Corbyn, and that is that he backs Scottish independence. So there we are. Excellent idea, Scotty, from the Scots, says Pauline Morrison. Uh, uh, of course, poor Nicola gets hammered for doing something that's alien to all unionist parties, sticking to the manifesto pledge. Yes, the wonderful thing about Ms Sturgeon and her government is that they're entirely... Honest, they have built up an integrity by sticking to their manifesto. Now, most politicians don't do much. They just talk about doing it. But the wonderful thing about the Scottish government 
is they are delivering big time. And that's fantastic. And I'm quite sure, I have a massive feeling in my water, because remember, Scotty McClure's worked all over the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, and uh, is known in all these countries, and is known as a household name. And what I would actually say, and this is, uh, this is uh, incredible, what I would actually say is what I've observed is that most of the people, say, north of the Midlands, would love to be governed from Holyrood and would love to be governed by Miss Sturgeon and her government. So there you go. It's a massive, massive thing. But for some reason, Westminster have built up this arrogance that comes from the sun never setting on the British Empire. Believe it or not, the sun just needs to pop out for a few minutes and it's set on what was the British Empire. Uh, when Brexit happens, more power will be taken from the EU to Westminster and powers to Scotland will also be grabbed by Westminster. This is it. I think we'd rather take our chances with Europe than uh, have a power grab. Do you think the establishment fears a Corbyn, the same as they feared Tony Benn? Well, the problem with uh, people like Tony Benn and Jeremy Corbyn from the establishment's point of view is I don't think it's necessarily a fear, but it makes them anxious because they tend to tell the truth. And, uh, you know, if you have a major crisis going on, the first casualty is always the truth. So that's why MPs might say, uh, shall we just tell them the truth? And uh, party heavies say, no, for goodness sake, don't tell them that. Um, so they go, well, stuff now. How are we doing for time? Oh, my goodness me. We're way past our share point. Can we share, 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 share? Share, 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 share. Integrity, that's the what? Spot on, Scotty. Of course, uh, the mountain pro-independent proponents face is 35 from 36 UK national newspapers promote only one side of the argument. That's why we need a free independent media run by me, Scotty McClure. So get your pennies out of your pocket and get them into gofundme.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClure. All right. And I shall set up the independent um, media for you. We will do what we can. We're looking for everybody thinks, whoa, he's a dreamer. Away you go. Uh, delusional, all that stuff, because I'm looking for five million pounds trust me that is tiny but after 40 years experience of setting up television and radio i think i can probably do some miracles with that amount of money so get your hand into your pocket get your debit and credit cards out go to gofundme.com forward slash scotty hyphen mcclue and start contributing uh louis faber i've just landed at gatwick from glasgow couldn't miss my scotty mcclue fix we're still taxiing on the runway. Louis, are you sure it's all right for you to be watching social media uh, when you're still on board the aircraft? How marvellous is that? Thank you for that, Louis. Appreciate it. I've heard the BBC's bias towards Scottish independence. Do you think that is true? Says Tony Mac. Well, certainly it was borne out on a number of occasions. And if you look at the rhetoric and watch the language that's been well, well practised, by the public service broadcasters and by other broadcast companies they will say scotland said no to independence <laughs> news flash news flash scotland did not say no to independence just over half of scotland said no to independence that's how close it was and that is with a very very heavily biased unionist media in newspapers and broadcasting so if we had the equivalent of a neutral broadcaster the thing about my good self i have no agenda all right i am very much for you the people scotty mcclue is the man of the people so i will not sell you a pup you back me i will back you that's the deal um, so there we go. So certainly there were a number of occasions, Tony, when the BBC were left wanting when it came to neutrality and non-bias, right? And there's, we can quote all these, so they're not a problem. I've shared again, pals, as Margaret Bonner. 
So they were only restricted when the plane's in flight, says Sean McBride. Sean, you've spelt plane, P-L-E-I-N, P-L-E-N-E, surely. Ban music from the radio, Scotty. Chat to the nation is the way forward, says the wonderful Mark Cruden, top businessman. There we are, and a fabulous fellow. And um, the non-voters, does that not go to the no side? Uh, non-voters, well, <clears throat> I would say everybody should make it their duty to vote. And a lot of people who voted no the last time did it either out of fear or out of ignorance or out of a lack of confidence. So I'm not knocking these people, but I think once we saw what happened as soon as the vote came in and it was a, a no in favour of no on that occasion, then I think our no voters were thinking, please give me the dunce's hat and I will walk about wearing it. Uh, so there you are. Yes, I agree. You're the man for the job, says Erica Meyer. Fantastic. If not, Erica, I shall come to Oz, to Australia, and run your media there for you. Uh, it wasn't close. The vote was rigged. Plenty of evidence showed, but it was never properly investigated. And we should have had our independence. If you'd listened to Scotty McClure, if you go to YouTube and look up Scotty McClure on independence, we would have been independent now. Let's see just how much the Scots want independence. It will take us all to roll up our sleeves, promoting our independence at every given opportunity. It will not simply fall into our lap. No, but what I would say is if you're reading a newspaper, ask yourself who owns that newspaper and would they benefit from an independent Scotland? If you're watching television, and I'm not talking about Scotty McClure and Facebook Live, which is perhaps the finest bit of television you'll ever see, then ask yourself, what interests do the company broadcasting to me have in Scottish independence, if any? All right. Now, when it comes to the BBC, they are the British Broadcasting Corporation. Remember, Britain is not a country. Remember, the United Kingdom is not a country. They are amalgams of a number of countries. Yes? So when people say, are you Scottish or are you British? It's a silly question. It doesn't. It's like pairing, uh, comparing apples and oranges, right? Being British doesn't mean you're part of a country. You're part of an amalgam of countries, right? So there you are. Scotty, did you ever think of running as an independent, says George? George, uh, I was asked, and the newspapers were never off the telephones, and I didn't do it at the time. It was a Glasgow by-election, and somebody said, do you realise, Scotty, if you stand for that, you will win it? Uh, and I thought, well, that was, that was a wee vote of confidence. So never say never. The game is not up yet. Um, oh, and of course, remember, the message for our Prime Minister is that politics is not a game. Uh, let's just see. Um, oh, yes, I've done that. Um, you're welcome. I think you can do a better job than some of them who are here, says Erica in Australia. I'd love to come and get a bit of sunshine, Erica. Um, Scotty McClure has always just worked his life uh, through from the age of 12. And it would be lovely. I've had a couple of holidays. I had a fabulous holiday in Crete. I had a fabulous holiday with a friend of mine in the Algarve. And uh, I've had a holiday in Holland uh, with the Scouts and things like that. But all my uh, uh, any days off are usually uh, spent working. Great to see someone getting their voice heard without the fear factory, getting hold of the script. Go on, Scotty, says Gary Edward Francis Kumskich. Yes, absolutely. Come ha u hakama, I say, Francis Edward Shaw. Um, I wish we'd stop anti-labour rhetoric. It's the futility, the futility of booting a dead body, what's the point? Centre our spotlight on the lies, arrogance and lack of respect for Scotland coming from the British Conservative, wait till I see here, oh dear. 